the Citadel Global Community Church, where stars are born and great futures are created. Welcome to the home of consummate and conscientious nation builders, whose hearts are open to the plans of the Holy Spirit, and in whose lives all things godly are possible, because we choose to win by righteousness. Good morning, CGCC. How are we all doing? I want us to begin to lift our voices wherever you are and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Let's worship him together. Let's exalt him. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our worship. Father, we honor you. We thank you, Jesus. There is none like you. my heart like you do I could search through all eternity Lord and find there is none like you sing with me there is none You are. 
your hearts, let's Our worship. Lord. Hey, declare you are Yahweh Alpha and Omega. Hey, we worship you, we honor you. Good morning, CGCC. Uh, it's such a wonderful, wonderful pleasure to be here with us once again this morning. God bless you. Uh, God, God, God keep you um, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sister Bimbo, for that wonderful, wonderful session of worship. I just felt like going on and on. Uh, but we will continue to do that even as we go on this morning in the name of Jesus. Well, I want to start uh, this morning by once again wishing us a very happy 35th anniversary of the Citadel Global Community Church. Uh, yesterday was the anniversary per se, but of course uh, it is a week long of activities of, of praising God, of you know sitting at the feet of the master to learn of him once again. And that runs through you know, all the way to Sunday. Uh, the 1st of April till the very, uh, 7th of April. So uh, before we begin any other thing, I want to invite everyone who may be watching this morning from whatever part of the world you may be watching from. If you are in Lagos, we would love to have the pleasure of your presence in church all these uh, coming days, um, uh, starting from 10 a.m., this morning and then we have the mornings and the evening sessions every day 10 a.m for the morning sessions and 6 p.m for the evening sessions and of course if you are in the diaspora or you are out of state in nigeria please tune in because it would be uh streamed live uh, um hallelujah so that's about that this morning well uh once again uh, peace to you, peace to your house, peace to all that you have, peace to your different spheres of influence, and peace to a great and beloved nation, Nigeria. And let me begin this morning by saying a very big thank you to Elder Wale Adelawa, who launched out uh, this week, uh, started the prayer watch this week with us yesterday, and what a wonderful, wonderful session that we had with him. Well, we're going to continue still in that same spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And But uh, before we go on this morning, I want you to turn to Psalm 89. Psalm 89 uh, and just verses 1 and 2. Um, the psalmist says, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known your faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Your faithfulness you shall establish in the very heavens. And um, this morning, I want us to look back, you know, especially as members of the Citadel Global Community Church and as everyone, you know, who, who's been a friend of the ministry, you know, in the past uh, uh, 35 years or whatever period of time you joined in. And I want us to look back and think of this goodness of the Lord and think of his mercies towards us and think of all that he has done, how he has helped us, how he has upheld us all of these years. And as we do that this morning, I want you to join me this morning in a song even before we begin. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. Amen. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. 
Yes, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. And with my mouth, with my mouth, will I make known your faithfulness, your faithfulness with my mouth will i make known your faithfulness to all generations i will sing of the mercies of the lord forever i will sing all the mercies of the Lord. As we ponder over that song, as we ponder over that word, the, those words that I just read in that psalm this morning, I want us to begin to sing of the mercies of the Lord in our hearts. Sing of the goodness of the Lord in your heart. Thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his tender mercies over these years. As we thank God for the Citadel Global Community Church for 30 five years i want you to plug yourself into that praise i want you to plug yourself into that thanksgiving for all the number of years that you have been alive and the lord has kept you and the lord has watched over you like a mother hen will gather our cheeks under our bosom so the lord continually watches over us he says underneath him i is I, I, I underneath us are his everlasting arms the one who has not allowed us to fall by the wayside the one who has kept us according to his word the one who has made his promises in our lives come alive and come into manifestation oh what a wonder you are father what good what a good god you are the one who keeps his promises the one who does not alter the word that is gone forth out of his mouth we bless your name this morning we worship and adore you we thank you for your goodness towards us we thank you jehovah god almighty because you have been with us like a mighty terrible one in the name of jesus we glorify your name this morning the psalmist says as we read yesterday if not the lord who had been on our side he says the floods of the enemy would have overwhelmed us they would have swallowed us but we thank god because he has not given us over as a prey into their hands he says the snare is broken like a bird our souls are escaped out of the snare of the fowler we bless your name this morning our god and our savior in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. As you keep your hand there this morning, I want you to also quickly turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 32. And I'm going to be reading uh, from verses 9 all the way to 12 or 14 thereabout. Um, Deuteronomy 32 and from verse 9. It says, for the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the place of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the wasteland, a howling wilderness. He enriched him, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle tears up its nest, hovers over his young, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its wings. So the Lord alone led him and, and, and there was no foreign God with him he made him ride in the heights of the earth that he may eat the produce of the fields he made him draw honey from the rock and from all and oil from the flinty rock curds from the cattle and milk of the flock with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of bashan and goats with the choicest waste and you drank wine the blood of the grapes I want us at this junction begin to thank God for pastor. Every single word that I have read out from that portion of scripture, and I believe you have read along with me, is something that actually depicts the life of the uh, 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 of the serving overseer. Is something that depicts the relationship that he has with God. How God took him from a desert land, from the wasteland, from the howling wilderness, and then He encircled him, He embraced him, He instructed him, and He kept him as the apple of His eye. Shall we begin? 
begin this morning to thank God and say, Father, we thank you for your son. We thank you, Father, for your arms that have continually embraced and encircled him. We thank you, Father, for calling him out, oh God, unto yourself. We thank you, Father, for showing him this goodly and godly heritage. We thank you, Father, for this great and bigger river that you showed him and caused him to begin to swim in. We want to give you praise, Father. We recognize, Father, that it is not the doing of a man, but this is the Lord's doing, and we are, we are glad in this doing. We are, we rejoice in this doing. Father, we give you praise. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you that all through the years, oh God Almighty, he has found you a place of refuge. The Bible says in the name of Jesus that under your wings will I take refuge until these calamities be over and past. Whatever things that he has gone through, through thick, through thin, in stormy weather, in shining weather, in all the different, different vagaries of life. The Lord has stood by him. The Lord has been merciful to him. All glory, all honor unto you, our Father, as we give you thanks this morning. We don't take this grace for granted. We cannot deny even the, the so-called list of your mercies, if there's anything like that. We cannot deny it. And so, Father, we give you praise this morning. We worship you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And you know, as we are praying for pastor this morning, we are praying for ourselves because whatsoever he does for one, he does for all. Whatsoever he has done and is doing and we do with a son and his servant is also done with us. He's doing with us and he will yet do with us. And so we praise him also for our own lives this morning that we have found our place within the grace upon his servant. Jehovah, we give you praise in the name of Jesus, the one who has kept him as the apple of his eye, watching over him all day, all night. Oh, Father, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, when we were young, there was a song we used to sing his, his song in, in school. You know, even as we marched past to our classes, it would say, the song says, uh, uh, when we go and when we come, angels are watching over, over us all day, all night. Angels are watching over, over us. The Lord has caused his angels to a camp round about him, to lift him up and to lift us up in his arms, lest we dash our foot against the stone. That is the promise of the Father to us. And he has made good that promise. We bless your name this morning father in the name of the lord jesus when you go to verse 11 of that scripture he says as an eagle stares up its nest hovers over its young spreading out its wings taking them up carrying them on his wings so the lord alone led him and there was no foreign god <laughs> with him that excites me because if i would ever pray you know, for him and even for my life, this is a major, major prayer point that I pray that, Father, in the name of Jesus, my faith, our faith will not be shipwrecked. We will not lose faith along the line. We will not fall by the wayside. And we know that it is only God who upholds his own. It is only God who keeps his own because by means of strength shall no man prevail. The race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. It is God that shows up for us. And so this morning, we want to thank Thank God that truly as a nickel stirs up his nest, the Lord has continually stirred us up. He hovers over his own in the name of the Lord Jesus. He spreads the wings of protection over us. And he says that the Lord does that. He takes us up. He carries his, us in his wings. and He has carried his over. And there was no strange God with him. Oh Lord, we give you praise this morning. There are so many people who, 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 who go through a mission sure they come they, 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 they pick up the bible they preach it but there are other things that they dip their hands into god has preserved our own from doing that it's been god alone and god alone and god alone he says uh, i need to read that he says and the lord alone led him nobody else has led him he has not been led by the seeing of the eyes or the hearing of the ears he has been led by the word of god by the presence of god by the power of god by the spirit 
Spirit of God. And so we want to give him praise this morning. And if the Lord, through your journeys, through life, whatever the season of your life, if the Lord has been able to uphold you and has not allowed you to wander to the left, to the right, looking for what is not lost, then it is time to give him praise that he has upheld you, has kept you in the name of Jesus. You know, Psalm 16 says, and I love that scripture also, it says that, their sorrows shall be multiplied who hasten after another God. We want to thank God for this man that he has not hastened after another God. He has not gone, you know, through one wilderness or the other, fornicating with other gods, idolatry, and then coming to pretend to us. God, we thank you for guarding the heart of your own, for not allowing any other God to lead him except you alone. Lord, we bless your name this morning in the name of Jesus. And of course, there's a reward for that. Verse 13 says, he made him ride in the heights of the earth that he might eat the produce of the fields. As he's been eaten, we have been eaten with him. Oh, royal dainties in the name of the Lord Jesus. We have been eaten from the fruit, the new wine. The Bible says, as the new wine is found in the cluster and someone says, destroy it not. We have taken of the new wine found in clusters. We are fruitful. Our heads are anointed with all we really we, we live in the place of his abundance all because of god he says he made him to draw honey from the rock oh we thank you father this morning we just give you praise all the glory to you our father 35 years of your goodness 35 years of your loving kindness 35 years of your faithfulness 35 years of being our god alone oh father we give you praise this this morning, God, we give you praise. We recount your goodness through the years. We give you praise. We worship you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. You know, I could spend the whole of this one hour this morning just blessing the name of the Lord Jesus because my heart is indicting a good matter. Even as I speak, oh God, of things concerning my Savior alone. Hey, 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 this morning, let the blessing, let, let the praise of God emanate from within you, from the very inside of your soul, out of your bellies. Let there begin a flow of the rivers of living waters unto our God in the name of Jesus for he has been good and he has been faithful to you to us father we give you praise this morning and you know what as we thank God for pastor we want to thank God for Mrs. B we want to thank God, God for his children for his for, for their spouses for his grandchildren because they are all have been co-laborers with him in the vineyard and so we want to say father thank you thank you for the strength that you have given is 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 better heart his help me indeed. Thank you, Father, for all that she has had to take on and taking it on with dignity, taking it on, oh God Almighty, without complaining, without murmuring, and being there, Father, giving him, oh God Almighty, that strength that he also needs to go on, giving him that grace, that opportunity for him to be able to go out there and not have to watch over his back. And my prayer is that, and it's not just even my prayer, it is that statute that that has been put forward in Israel that the portion of him that goes to battle is the same of the, uh, 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 as the portion of him who tarries by the storm. For every time that she has tarried by the storm on behalf of this one and has been like my Jolom, you know, that kind of security, that kind of, 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 of help, of companionship, we declare this morning that because they're co laborers in the same vineyard, every single reward from pastor for pastor will be us also in the name of Jesus and their children will be great and mighty on the face of the earth because a seed shall serve him the Bible says and he shall be accounted to him for a generation he shall be accounted to him for a posterity so father this morning we bless you for Mrs. B we thank you for the woman that you have made her and we trust you for more strength we trust you for more grace the oil of anointing upon her head will not in the name of the Lord Jesus run dry Thank you for those children. Thank you for every one of them. Mighty upon the face of the earth. For Bumi, for Shegun, 
for 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 fisayo, for sheyi and for rotimi for the spouses of the ones that are married now for the spouses of the ones yet to be married that are already coming into manifestation for the children that they have now for the more children that they're going to have after father generations upon generations upon generations until christ comes i declare that generation will continually to be blessed we continue to be blessed in the name of the lord jesus and i pray for you too as you watch that in the name of the lord jesus all of these graces all of these blessings all the promises of god in your own life also shall be yea and amen in christ jesus the word of the lord to you will not be yea and nay in the name of the lord jesus christ everyone who has held up their hands in this past 35 years everyone who has given them as little as a cup of water i declare in the name of jesus you will not lose your reward in jesus precious name father we give you thanks this morning be glorified be magnified in jesus precious name we'll pray amen and so very quickly this morning the theme of our of our uh, of the prayer watch for the week is the faithfulness of god you know it, it was supposed to be another theme that i had been told before and i'd already in my in my heart began to prepare and then you know the senate president came and said i'm sorry the theme has changed and i said what's the thing this time and he said the faithfulness of god i said you have touched on a cord on the inside of me. And everybody who knows me, I said to people, yes, God has so many attributes, his love, his mercy, his compassion, everything. But the one thing that I celebrate above everything is the faithfulness of our God. I love his faithfulness. I celebrate his faithfulness. Every time I stand before the Father to pray, the moment I touch on that faithfulness, I just begin to cry. Because look, when you look around you, you understand that God, has been faithful and is faithful and will yet be faithful. And if it, you think he has not been faithful to you, just hold on. We will get there. So Psalm 117, just two verses of scripture there. He says, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Lord him, all your peoples, for his merciful kindness is great toward us and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh my God, oh my word. I'm super excited this morning. I need to calm down to be able to behave. And so let me let me just try and calm down because the spirit on the inside of me is so excited and it's just bubbling over. What is this thing called faithfulness? You know, I tried to look for it and this is the much that I found. It says the Hebrew word that is used for faithfulness is called emuna and it means firmness, to be firm not to be shaken here and there, not to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. You know, that Mrs. B scripture, he says, you know, God in, in him, there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. That is what this is saying when he says firmness. But let's look at, you know, the definitions that I was able to bring out. He says, touch fast. And when he says steadfast, it means to be resolute or dutifully firm and unwavering. That's the word firmness again. But unwavering in what? In affection or allegiance. Allegiance there means loyalty or commitment. And so we want to look at it. Has God indeed be steadfast? Has he been resolutely or dutifully fully firm and unwavering in his affection and in his allegiance, his loyalty and commitment to us? Has he been? Let's look at the scripture, John 3, verse 16. You don't, I mean, that's a scripture that every one of us should know. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. That is the love and that, that is the faithfulness of God demonstrated through his love for us. And when you look at 1 John 3, 1, uh, John must have had a very, very deep, you know, understanding of his faithfulness expressed through his love. The same John says in John 1, in 1 John 1, 
sorry, in First John 3 and in verse 1, he says, Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us, that we should be called the sons of God. I'm just going to stop there. If you look at Psalm 8, I'm just pulling the scriptures together. Psalm 8 verse 4 says, What is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him. Oh, you have made him just a little lower than a low him himself, and you have crowned him with your loving kindness and with your tender mercies. This morning, if you do not understand the faithfulness of God, understand it through his love to us. He doesn't owe us. He does not owe us anything. If there's anything we deserve from this man, it is you know, from, well, man, God, God, man, you know, that we deserve from him. It is a punishment for all our sins. But no, that's not the God that we serve. He's a faithful God. He's faithful to us through his love. Shall we begin then this morning to again thank God for his faithfulness expressed in his love to us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this love that will not let us go. This love that is constantly searching for us in every nook and cranny, in the, the same love the, that will make oh, God, uh, uh, the, the Lamb of God himself, live the 99 and go in search of the one. And when he is found, the Bible says he puts him upon his shoulder and he brings him home. That is the faithfulness of God. Demonstrate that towards us in his love. We thank him for it this morning. Can we begin to also thank him for his gift, the gift of his son, the gift of his spirit. Pastor taught us that when he gave his son, he gave his best, and when he gave the spirit, he gave his all. He emptied himself unto us. Can we begin to thank him? You know what? When he gave us the gift of his son, it was in response to a promise that he had made many, many thousands of years before. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And he made it good to us when Simeon was rejoicing over the birth of Jesus Christ. I think that's in the book of Luke. He expressed that, that according to us, he has promised us. And so you see the faithfulness of God there in keeping his promise. It is by the same token that that he gave us the Holy Spirit. He said, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. It is expedient for me that I should go. He says, wait for those promise of the Father. The Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father that is made manifest, that is made true. Oh, that is the faithfulness of God. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise because when you speak a word, it is as good as done. It is as good as settled. You your word does not return to you, boy. That is a demonstration of your faithfulness. And we thank you for it this morning. In the name of Jesus, John went on to say, Behold what manner of love the Father had given unto us, that we, <laughs> ah, a wretch like me should be called the Son of God. Oh, my Father, I give you praise this morning. I thank you. The Bible talks about us who were not a people, but now are called the sons of the living God. What, what a great grace. What a what faithfulness displayed by the Father. Lord, I thank you for my sonship in Christ. I thank you. I thank you. I give you praise in the name of Jesus. A second portion of that definition says a loyal, a faithful friend. <laughs> Oh, Lord, I thank you this morning. The songwriter said, Can we find a friend so faithful? Who will all our burdens bear? How many friends do you have who will bear your burdens the way Christ bears them? Who, who, who will take it up upon himself to carry the weight of your burdens? He says, Cast your burden upon him. You know, for I care for you. He, 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 you know, he, every time that you are going through, the Lord is going through with you. He carries your body on his shoulder as if it is his own. How many God, how many people, how many gods are like that? He says, we do not have a high priest who cannot be moved by the feelings of our infirmities. He is moved by the feelings of your infirmities. He walked where you walk. He drank where you drank. Everything that happened to you happened to him. He took him upon himself because of his faithfulness demonstrated to you. What depth of loyalty. Father, this morning we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness expressed towards us through your friendship. Our friendship, oh God Almighty, 
that you you express through the ultimate sacrifice of your son of his life we want to thank you the loyalty of god the the, the, the faithfulness of god as a friend to us who is a very present help in times of trouble you know as faithful as God is to us, as loyal as he is to that friendship, the Bible says even the lawful captive shall be delivered. Even when we knowingly walk into sin, even when we knowingly walk into prison, walk into all kinds of bondages and chains are all around us, he still goes to fight on our behalf. What a friend. What a loyal, loyal God. Lord, we thank you this morning. In the name of Jesus. And then he says, he's firm in adherence to promises or in the observance of duty. Ah, I don't know anyone who is so faithful to his promises. Oh, he says, so shall the word be that goes out of my mouth. He shall not return to me void. He says, I do not break my covenant with light and day. Therefore, I will not break, you know, break it with you. Look, very quickly, very quickly, look at Genesis 22. I, I mean, I, I'm trying to, to just, uh, 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 you know, uh, go through as many texts as we can go through this morning before this hour is over. Genesis 22 15 to 18 is a scripture you all know. It says, Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessing, I will bless you. Multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies in your Seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my word. Keep your hands there and let's quickly run to Hebrews, Hebrews um, chapter, chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6 and I want to read 13 to 18. The Bible says, for when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, surely, blessing, I will bless you, multiplying, I will multiply you. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men indeed swear by the greater and an oath for confirmation is for them an end of all dispute. Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise, the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This is God. You know, I, I, I just cannot get over the faithfulness of our God. He still brought himself under the subjection of an oath just to make sure that, look, I, what I have said I will do, this is a confirmation, this is a token of what I have said to let you know that indeed I will do it, I swear by myself, you know, and when we look at that portion that says, you know, uh, 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 that defines faithfulness as a faithful friend, he was a friend to Abraham. He was the one who called Abraham, his friend, and said, shall I hide anything from Abraham, you know, my friend? And then he took this friendship over to us. He says, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. That was what he was saying to the disciples. And he said the same to us. He's our friend, our very present help in trouble. And so this morning, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you, value how do you account for the faithfulness of god through his promises i'm going to give you another one let's go back to psalm 89 i'm just laying foundation and maybe in 20 minutes you know i, I i'll just share a couple of things psalm 89 again uh very quickly psalm 89 look at verses 30 to 37 psalm 89 verses 30 to 37 he said this was to David he was speaking. If his sons forsake my law 
and do not walk in my judgments, if they break my statutes and do not keep my commandments, then I will punish their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. Nevertheless, my loving kindness I will not utterly take from him, nor allow my faithfulness to fail. My covenant I will not break, nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness, can you imagine? I will not lie to David. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me, it shall be established forever like the moon, even like the faithful witness in the sky. Look at the length that God went through in, in demonstrating his faithfulness to David. The question I want to ask you, do, did God make good this promise? Of course he did. Solomon was the son. Solomon's birth was through, you know, very untoward circumstances. The kind of child we will look and say, hmm. You know how we call them here, despised and all of that. And God decided, look, Jedida, my beloved. And he said he will sit upon the throne of his father. God made good that promise. And today, even up to today, Jesus, the son of David, is still sitting upon that throne, the everlasting throne forever and ever. When God gives a promise, he makes it true. There was a place where he was, you know, he had given his promise to David like that. He will build him a house and all of that. And David said in response, I'm not turning there, it's not in my notes. David said, oh Lord, you have spoken about your servant for a long time to come. David's understanding of eternity was for a long time to come. He was still bound in time. He did not understand that when God makes a promise, it is for perpetual generations. And God made good that promise. You know, that is our God. And when you look at Isaiah 55 and in verse 3, it, it, you know, the prophet refers to this promise of the, to David and the covenant with David. He says the sure mercies of David. You are there this morning. You, you cannot see the sure mercies of God in your life. You cannot see the promises of God operating in your life. Oh, <laughs> if you really, really can think deep, the Yoruba people say, and Toba Monuro, no Mokada, if you know how to think deeply, if you are able to step up your thinking, even in this season, you will know how to give thanks. You will know that it is God who has been on your side. He has spared your life for the length of time that you have been on planet Earth. He has taken care of you. He has led you through every high and uh, every hell and high water. He has not allowed any evil to come near you. And you have the nerve to doubt his faithfulness? No, not on your life. He's a faithful God. What he promises he does throughout all generations. A God, a God makes good his promise. And so this morning, I want to thank you. I want you to thank God. Because, you know, we are still inscribed, we are conscripted into every covenant that he made. Whether it's a covenant he made with Noah, whether it's a covenant he made with Abraham, whether it's a covenant we made with David, with Jacob, with anyone, we are conscripted into that covenant. And so would you rise up this morning and begin to thank him for being a covenant keeping God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for carrying us in his heart for being mindful of us, for swearing an oath to let us know that, look, this word that I've spoken is established. Whatsoever the Lord has spoken over your life, don't take it lightly. If it has not yet manifested all the days of your life, you are expected to wait until your change comes. It will come through for you. My God is not a man that he should lie. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And you know the beauty of God and his faithfulness. What distinguishes him from man and from whoever tries to ascribe the name God, you know, to themselves with a small g. God is not only willing to keep his covenant and make good his promises. He is able without any hindrance or limitations. Therefore, you should not be afraid. <laughs> Therefore, you should not be afraid. When I say that, what I mean is, as human beings, we can make promises to people. I will do this, I will do that. And our intentions can be so very genuine, you know, sincere from powers of mercy. But you know the truth of the matter? It is only God that can enable us to make that promise come to pass. We could die. If you die, that's the end of the promise. That's the end of the covenant. You could fall into a situation where things turn upside down from you, for you, and even you yourself begin to need help. And you are not able, you are not able, you know, to make good your promise. Not our God. 
<laughs> not a God is able to do, is willing to do, no hindrance, no limitations whatsoever. And so this morning, can you begin to thank him for that, for that great attribute in the name of the Lord Jesus. You know, I say, when you know that that is the kind of person who makes a promise, what is that fair? What? Psalm 46, my mom used to sing it in a song. It's a, it's a psalm. And she would go, the Lord is my hope and strength, my very present help in trouble. Therefore, shall I not be afraid, though the earth be moved and be carried away into the midst of the sea, though the waters rage and swell, and at the tempest of the sea, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is a refuge. Though the waters rage and they swell and they are carried away to the midst of the sea, the Lord of hosts who is, is with us. The God of Jacob is a refuge. He is not only able, he is willing. He is not only willing, he is able. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, our Father and our God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 36. Psalm 36. Psalm 36. Verse 5 to 11. I want to read the faithfulness of God again. He says, oh, oh, your mercy, O oh Lord, is in the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Your righteousness is like great mountains. I think in James says like majestic mountains. Your judgments are a great deep. There's a depth to it. Oh Lord, you preserve man and beast. How precious is your loving kindness, oh God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings and they are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house and you give them drink from the river of your pleasures. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the food of pride come against me and let not the hand of the wicked drive me away there are the wicked there the workers of iniquity are falling they have been cast out and are not able to rise the case that uh, the text i want to take out from this is faithfulness reaches up to the clouds as a matter of fact, it goes beyond it. And in Timothy, 2 Timothy 2, 13, he says, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. You know, the beauty of that, the faithfulness of God to us is not dependent upon our faithfulness to him. <laughs> As a matter of fact, he produced 62. When he made a covenant with Abraham, he was the one that made it for himself and on behalf of Abraham too. Who are we to make a covenant with God? What do we have to give? What do we have to put down, as the lawyers will say, as consideration in a contract? Nothing, nothing except our wretchedness. And so he took for himself, he took for us. What a good God. I say, thank him this morning. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we worship you. We adore you, our Father and our God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we cannot be grateful enough. We cannot even express the depth of our love, on our, of our gratitude to you this morning. But as we come into your presence, just giving you thanks this morning, nothing more. In the name of Jesus, we say, let the words of our heart, mouth, the meditations of our heart, oh God, be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But very quickly, so that it doesn't appear that this woman has just come, you know, this morning, she doesn't have anything to pray, to say, to pray about. I do have, you know, I do have, but in my heart is, I said it, indicting a good matter, and that matter is praise unto our king. Now, Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie. Not the son of man that he should repent. He says, as it said, you know, let, let me, let me, I, I know that scripture, but let me read it out to you the way it is. It says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. As it said, and will he not do, or as it spoken, and will it not make it good. Now, I want to speak to people this morning who for one reason or the other, you doubt the faithfulness of God. You doubt the promises of God that are spoken over your life, over the house. You doubt the covenant that God has caught with you the moment you became a, a born-again Christian and you submitted the entirety of your life to him. 
I want to encourage you this morning. Get out of that space. God is not a man that he should lie. Now we'll tell you why things go that way with us sometimes. The reason is because, you know, as soon as the word of God goes out, there are two workers who are accompanying it immediately. Two major forces. One, angelic forces who go out to ensure or to execute the word and make it uh, true by the leadings of the Holy Spirit. And there are satanic forces who stand with the singular goal of frustrating the word of God and jettisoning it. Now, whosoever you yield yourself to at that particular moment is the one that does what? That is going to prevail over your life. Whether the word comes true for you or it does not come true for you. God has spoken the word. He carries within every characteristic, every everything within the DNA of that word to come to pass. But your attitude, your disposition towards it can either help your, your forces of hell or aid the forces, you know, or, 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 or the satanic forces that go against that word. I'm going to give a very short testimony. I used to be in a church where we did something they call promises. You know, they put a text of scripture on a card, you know, and you pick when we have occasions and especially as we turn the new year, just to help people to guide them to at least have one word that they, are, they can keep referring to, you know, and to be speaking to them in the course of the year. The very first time we did it, I took this scripture, Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie. That very year, my mother passed. The second year, I took the scripture, you know, um, um, it is good for you to bear the yoke in your youth. You know, God was preparing me. Do you know what happened? The following year, after my mother died, my sister died. The third year, <laughs> a family member brought a sacrifice to my doorstep. And as I opened the door and saw that sacrifice, I heard the voice, the words in my ears begin to descend the staircase and begin to wander away. You will turn mad now. Look, eventually my pastor at the time would confirm that word, even when I didn't tell him that he saw this thing in a vision. And he, he saw, saw a woman put something behind the door and said, Alora Mirami, go and be lost forever. But for God. Now, if you look at that, it would appear that the word of God is not true. Oh, there were challenges upon challenges year in, year out. And it will appear that, but you, you, you the, the word you gave me is that God is not a man that you should lie. That was Satan in action, trying, you know, to kind of uh, 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 demonstrate to me that God is a liar. No, he's not. That word in years after, I was able to now understand that God knowing what was going to come was every, putting that word as a foundation for my faith to let me know that, look, whatever happens in your life, whatever comes your way, I am not a man that I should lie. Have I said, shall I not do? Have I spoken and will I not make it true? That is what I'm presenting to you this morning. I have just very short time to leave you know, for this to be over. But I want you to begin to search through your life. What are the words or promises that God has spoken over your life, whether as an individual, corporately over the church of the living God that you are a part of? What is that word? What is that promise? Wait for it. He that will tarry may tarry, you know, he that will tarry will come in the name of the Lord Jesus, the word of God does not return to him void. And so this morning, what is the prayer? Whatsoever is standing as an obstruction and hindrance to the blessings of God, to the promises of God coming to pass in our lives, we say, Father, let your angelic forces go to work, dislodge the powers of the princes of the air in the name of Jesus and create an open, open heavens for, for your word to come through to us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Daniel 10, if you read from 10 to 13, as he was praying and fasting, in three weeks, the Bible says the Satan also withstood him for those 21 days. That means it was a day for a day. Every single day that Daniel stood before the Lord trying to bring the plans and purpose of God, you know, into physical manifestation, Satan was withstanding him for every day. 
and you want to go to bed, you know, until reinforcement came from heaven. I declare to you this morning, whatsoever stood as an entrance over your life, over the promises and the covenant of God coming to pass in your life, whatsoever that entrance is, I dislodge them in the realm of the spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Bible says we carry the battle to the gates of the enemy, in the name of the Lord Jesus. We dislodge every entrance, in Jesus' name, we break away the chains, we roll away the stone in the name of the Lord Jesus. The word of God will come to pass in your life. Open heavens in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we also pray this morning, Lord, help my faith. Help me in the name of Jesus to not wander away in impatience and unbelief as I wait upon you, Father. But grant me the grace to wait all the days of my appointed time until my change comes. That was what Job said. I will wait. The Lord will grant unto us patience in the name of Jesus that we might be partakers of them who through faith and patience inherited the promises. And if your faith is hanging low this morning, by the name in the name of Jesus I shut them off I say father increase our faith in the name of the Lord Jesus let us be rooted in faith knowing fully well that the God we serve is a faithful God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ oh father thank you and what other prayer do you need to pray that you will God will empower you to stay in the place of prayer and devotion until that help comes through for you in the name of Jesus Daniel did not shake Daniel remained in the place of prayer until the help came. The problem with us is that we're too quick to abandon this battle. We're too quick to abandon this fight. No, 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 no. The violent take it by force. And so this morning, I release unto you the grace in the name of Jesus to continue in the place of prayer, the place of worship, the place of the study of the word, of meditations in the name of the Lord Jesus on the goodness of God and that your faith will not fail in the name of the Lord Jesus until help comes for you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Now, that is one reason why it might appear that the word of God to you is a lie. Now, the second reason, and we're going to read that, maybe that will be the last, you know, that, that might be the last thing I'm able to take. Deuteronomy 32, 15 to 20. I'm going to quickly read that scripture. Deuteronomy 32, 15 to 20. It says, <laughs> Oh, there. You know, we read it initially to pray, and we read it up to verse 14. You know, the goodness of God displayed to us, you know, us. And then in verse 15, there's a bolt. May God deliver us from this negative bolt in our lives and in our work with God. He says, but Jasheron grew fat and kicked. You grow fat, you grow thick. You are obese. Then he forsook God who made him and scornfully esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with foreign gods. You know, it says he led him. There was no strange God, no foreign God with him. But then they took their focus. They took their eyes of God. They had become fat and flourishing. <laughs> and then they decided, Moti arrived. In, like Nabal the fool, like the rich fool that we looked at some, some weeks ago. He says in verse 16, they provoked him to jealousy with foreign gods, with abominations, they provoked him to anger. They sacrificed to demons, not to God, to gods they did not know, to new gods, new arrivals. There are people that are always looking for new arrivals. Ah, that church, that's where it's happening now. You took there. You know, is it the creator that they say they're always looking for something to hear a new thing or a ten years, each years? He says that, you know, <laughs> they, they sacrifice to demons, not to God, to gods they did not know, to new gods, new arrivals, that your fathers did not fear of the rock who begot you. You are unmindful and have forgotten the God who fathered you. And when the Lord saw it, he spawned them because of the provocation of his sons and his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end will be for they are a perverse generation, children in whom is no faith. And he goes on. The Bible says God spawned them. Look, it, it, this is not the season, though. <laughs> I, I, I've told a couple of, you know, uh, uh, close people in church. I say, if you have an idea the season we're in, then you will behave. Because when God says there's a famine coming, famine in itself is judgment. Everywhere you saw famine in the Bible, it was judgment. So the spirit of judgment itself is hanging in the air. Be careful. 
Be careful to not forget the rock that brought you. To not to for, forget the God that led you through the path. You know, the, 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 the land path who makes room for you and it makes you fruitful in the land and then you think you have arrived. If you are in that space, the word of God cannot work for you. The covenant of God cannot work for you. The promises of God cannot come to reality in your life. And so this morning, I want us to pray in the name of Jesus that God will help us. It doesn't matter how blessed we are in this season. It doesn't matter how fat and flourishing we become. That is the goal of the Father. He says, I will test above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in hell, even as your soul prospers. Prosperity is not something that we, 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 we instituted. It is God who instituted prosperity from the very beginning because he's a God of abundance. But if you allow the blessings of God to become a curse in your life, you have yourself to blame. And so this morning, shall we pray? that God let your blessings upon my life not become a tool of destruction of that very same life in the name of Jesus help me father keep me under 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 your command in the name of the Lord Jesus let my focus not shift from the blesser to the blessings in the name of the Lord Jesus let my heart oh God be fixed on you irrespective of how blessed I get let me not put my attention on things that will perish let my hope be set on things above in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in just uh, to, to be set on things that are eternal in the name of the Lord Jesus, in this year of unusual and uncommon elevation, let us pray that our promotion will not become a downfall. There are people that when you look at their lives in retrospect, you come to the conclusion that it would have been better for them to have been left where they were because even at that point in time, they were still able to, you know, to, 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 to keep in, 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 space, in shape uh, 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 and keep in space. But when their promotion came, that led to their discussion. May that not be our portion. May it not be my portion. May it not be your portion. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. CJCC in this year of unusual uncommon elevation, God has promised to come out with his faithfulness like never before. But be careful how you handle it. In the name of Jesus, shall we pray that God will help us to retain his word and his fear in, his, in our hearts in the name of Jesus that we will not get to a point where we will say who is the Lord? In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Lord will keep us. True, in the name of Jesus. What is your desire today? That's what I'm going to end with. I won't be able to take it off, but let me keep in order. What is your desire today? Psalm 49. That would, you know, Psalm 49, verse 15 to 16. Psalm 49, 15 to 16. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. Psalm 49, I'm sorry, I'm a bit slow, 49, okay, Psalm, uh, verse 15 to 16, it says, excuse me, Psalm, oh, sorry, Isaiah 49, uh, I have a minute to, Isaiah 49, <laughs> I'm sorry, Isaiah 49, 15 and 16, it says, can a woman forget a nursing child? And not have compassion on the son of a womb. Surely they may forget. Yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. What is that thing that is a desire? And you think the Lord cannot do it? No, 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 no. He, he, he will not forget you. He says, can a woman... I'm a woman, I've mothered children, and I understand what it feels like. You know, it, 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 when you're not around your, your baby, it, it, your breast begin to get, and, and God, it begins to pull you, and you're looking for how to get to that child. That And God is saying, beyond the love of a woman, they may forget, circumstances may come that may make them forget. He says, but I will never forget you. You are inscribed on the palms of my hands. Every time I go like this, that is what I see. You have these marks on your hands. God has marks on his hands. Those marks are us. This morning, let your faith arise in the name of Jesus. Trust God. Do the needful and you will see God come through for you in the name <coughs> of the Lord Jesus Christ. He came through for Abraham. He gave him the seed 
of promise. The Bible says, and the Lord visited Sarah. He says, you know, of Rachel, the Lord remembered Rachel. He says of Hannah, the Lord remembered Hannah. He says in Psalm 105, 42, you know, he says he remembered the Israelites in the land of Egypt. He says, I have remembered my covenant with Abraham and he brought them out. Whatsoever it is, the Lord will remember you today for good in the name of Jesus. He will make his promises come true in your life. The faithfulness of God will come shining through for you in this day, in this month, in this year, and all the days of your lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I know I've overshot my time by a minute, but can we just thank God again and trust him that what he has promised will come true for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise this morning. We worship and adore you, and we commit the apostolic summit to your hands this day that, Father, it will be an overflowing abundance of your word in the name of the Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' precious name. We pray. Amen. Shall we share our benediction this morning? Hebrews uh, 13, verses 20 and 21. Now, may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make us complete in every good work to do his will, walking in us what is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, CGCC. God bless you. And once again, happy 35th anniversary.